And when we moored up down Port <coughs> Power, we was alongside of one another. We was going to have a cup of tea with Grandad. And uh, another boat come in and asked to chucked up the rope. And I went up on the bow and I took the rope and I fell overboard. <laughs> Next minute, I can remember outside Port Power Harbour, as clear as it, I remember it like yesterday, going down, sinking, because I can't swim. And I hit the bottom. It must have been about 18 foot deep then. It was pretty deep. And I remember coming up and I was passing you going down. <laughs> and I remember that. You you was going down. I was coming up, bubbles and everything else. I remember my granddad hanging over the when I could broke surface. He grabbed me over by the collar, pulled me in the boat and got me in and called me a few names. And then he looked at you. You come up again. He shouted at you. He had told a, me I had to wait. He had to wait. I had to wait. Get the boy in. To sort me out. <laughs> What a bloody game. <laughs> he couldn't swim either. I couldn't swim. Granddad couldn't swim. Three no, generations. No, and his father couldn't swim. I remember my granddad, I said to him, why don't you learn to swim then, Granddad? And he said, prolongs the agony, boy. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, well, out there with the, the leather boots and the leather oil skins, of course, didn't have the helicopters then, and they didn't have the fast lifeboats. They was all fishing, I suppose, out the back of the Eddystone. But um, I can't get the hang of it. I've, I've tried it, but I still ain't no bloody good at it. I, I remember clearly that uh, that day because we were both wet through and yeah. I had to borrow his dungarees and put yeah, on his bed and brace. And you had his jacket. And his sleeves out yeah. here. And I had my best watch, the only watch I had. <laughs> it had a sweep band and the water, we was pushing the, the <laughs> sweep band, was pushing the bloody water around <laughs> under the face. <laughs> when I got yeah. home, I took him apart. He never worked again. I remember going home, knocking on the door to Grandma. She oh, wondered yeah. what the hell I looked like. Yeah. What's happened? I said, I fell overboard. My father's gone in after me. He's gone in. Oh, my goodness, me! The state we was in. I wasn't allowed to go then for a day or two. He didn't look after me. The worst experience I ever remember was when we went fishing. It was the last time we ever went fishing. He went and bought this net just before christmas it was and he went out and bought this net somewhere and he was going to shoot him to get some salmon peel out off the pier going out around the uh just yeah. like boys beach yeah. out around there and he got this net and he went out and shot him on his own and came in but he's he's put tony boat the 18 foot yeah. open boat and i was still at work because i was pretty busy then with work and uh your mother phoned me up and said, you better come home quick because your father's going to go out and all this net in and he's taking Tony with him. I said, no, never. I said, it's blowing a bloody gale. I was a good aunt. I was only seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I got home and he was determined to go. I said, leave the net. I can't leave the net. He said, I've just bought it. He said, we've got to get the net in. So I said, well, you ain't going out just with the boy. Of course, you wouldn't go out you you wanted to go out, insisted on going out, because your granddad was there. So the three of us went out, and it snowed, and it blew, and we had to put a rope around you. You was up forward, clucking down on the, sitting on the bottom of the boat, in the, inside, of course, not outside, because no, you can't I, swim. No, I know that. So I know you wanted to do, but... <laughs> <laughs> and we put a rope around his waist, and tied him, and I was on the tiller. And when we went out past the pier, it was bad on the bar. Well, I don't ever think we thought we were coming back again. We went out and got the net. Did we catch anything? Full up with bloody weed. We yeah, didn't catch yeah. a thing. Full up with weed. The easterly wind had blown up. Got all the net mixed up. All the weed. And that was the last time we ever went out fishing together. I remember that going out on the bigger boat, Congrin. You know, I always used to get seasick. Yeah, you All the sick. bloody time. I could never get over the seasick. And I used to sit on, try to lie on the engine box to try to shut my eyes. And I want, you know, wanted to come in, but didn't want to come in. In that time, the conger, the engine slowed down. I remember lifting the floorboards back half, and the congers are wrapped around the shaft yeah. and slowed the engine down. And it slowed us down. In congers, I've only heard them say, but they do bark. They sound a bit like like dogs. They do. They bark. And I remember we landed, had a load of conger, and we landed them, and uh, how long they'd last with the gutted, 
out on the key, still swirling around. Yeah. Yeah, used to catch a lot of conger, but seasickness used to get to me awful. And then I went full-time fishing. It took me years and years to get over over the seasickness. It was uh, wasn't very nice. I remember walking down with um, down to the quay some mornings. I'd go down with Phil in Aberdeen, and I used to be sick going along the quay, thinking about going to sea. It was just mentally, I just thought, oh, here we go, another bloody day out there. And I'll be bad before we we went on the boat, but uh, some days I I was better than others. But that uh, was when you was going out with Frank Pengelly. Yeah, Moogie. Another Pengelly. Yeah, yeah. We caught a lot of mackerel there. And uh, his boy's still fishing now. Yeah, Mike, good friend of mine. Yeah, he, yeah. Some of the lads, they it was in their blood. But for me, I'm afraid I went for financial reasons and nothing else. But um, we used to catch a lot of mackerel. A lot of mac. Well, we we all made a good living out of that. Then the Scotchmen come down, and um, as you know, the big boats, and they fished it out one winter. And they caught them nearly all up. Now the boys now. I mean, I know it's years and years now, but they can't find them now. They're gone.